Good morning, all. I am Casey Durango of Go Keto with Casey, and my lighting is all messed up here. Um, I like to talk about how I've lost 97.4 pounds on the ketogenic diet, and how you might be able to lose weight, improve your health, and regain control of your life. It wouldn't be a Saturday morning without the clocks all going off at the same time. Love our clocks. Um, I hope today finds you well. Today's topic is going to be about how we tend to... Well, there's confusion. Let's just face it. There's confusion about the ketogenic diet. Very quickly, quick primer, the ketogenic diet is a way of eating where you reduce your carbohydrate intake to a level where your liver does not put out glucose for fuel. When it doesn't produce glucose for fuel, your body happily switches over to burning fat or ketones for fuel. That's why it's called the ketogenic diet. That's a very simplistic way of putting it, but in a nutshell, that's kind of it. And we do well burning fat for fuel. Not only do our minds sometimes function better, but when we're burning fat for fuel, if we do it right, we're burning body fat for fuel. And there are a lot of benefits to that, more than just looking cute in clothes. Um, there are health benefits to it as well. But, but today, let's just, let's just hone in on this. Let's um, think about, uh, are you curious about the diet? Do you have questions? Are you new to it? Are you beyond curious? Are you now confused? Because that's a thing too. Lots of confusion. Some of the confusion, in my opinion, is created on purpose. And why would that be? Why would anyone want to confuse us about something so basic as Keep your carb intake to about 20 grams or fewer a day. Eat fatty sources of protein and don't eat if you're not hungry. Why would anyone want us to be confused about that? Well, because if we are confused, then we might be tempted to purchase something or sign up for something that will help make it easier. Clever, right? This is not a new story. You know, this is not a new thing. You know, it's, it's not unlike back in the day when, uh, you know, it didn't used to be a requirement that, that babies were issued Social Security numbers. You didn't have to have one until you went to work. And so when it became an issue that you need Social Security number, there were companies that would send you, while you were still in the hospital, still recovering from the labor here, we will help navigate this minefield for you. For only $15, we will make sure your newborn gets a social security number. Well, that's scary. It must be confusing if they're going to charge $15. No, all you do is go to Social Security Administration, get a social security number for free. So if we're confused, we become another revenue source for a product or a pitch or a service. But... Some of this is on us. It's not just the pitchmen, pitch women. It's not just the products. It's not just the questionable, air quotes, doctors. It's not just some of the crud science. And it's not just the vested interests who would like us to continue eating grains and sugar. Some of it's on us. Sometimes... We'd rather be confused than just make a change. You know, it's, and that's not new either. There is a line. You know, there are those who would rather curse the darkness than light a candle. Light a candle, y'all. Light your own candle. Become your own advocate and kind of become your own expert. Now that does not mean that you need to wade through reams of scientific journals in the minutia of does protein turn into sugar if you overeat it. Now, let me just let me just 
say this. Protein does not become sugar any more than straw becomes gold. Okay? But people will get, they'll focus in on the grams of protein and the grams of fat and the percentage of the this and the so-and-so of that and the vitamins. Let's just take a step back and realize that people have been eating food for our entire human existence. And I am going to dare say that up until fairly recently, no one paid attention to percentages. We are designed to eat the way whatever food we choose is used. Some of us are happy and function better eating a low-fat diet. Some people thrive as vegans. Some people just like to sweat it out and they move more and they eat less. Whatever works for you. You are your own expert on your body if you listen to it. Sometimes we tend to not listen. Again, we'd rather curse the darkness than light a match or light a, light a candle. Listen to your body. If you find that if you are eating A lot of whole grains and vegetables, a la, as has been recommended, but you continually have tummy troubles and bowel issues, if you're hungry all the time, if you can't seem to lose weight, listen to your body. If you find that when I just keep my carbs to 20 grams or fewer, and, and I don't eat if I'm not hungry, if you feel better, that is, that is right for you. That is right for me. And all I can do is share my experience as a non-special snowflake. I have had health concerns over the years, as many people have. I am post-menopausal. This month I'll be 60. I'll turn 60. But I'm not special. I'm a normal, average, I'm you. I don't care whether you're female or male. I don't care whether you are 55 or 45 or 25 or 19. If you have had weight issues that you just can't seem to figure out why, you're trying to do everything as prescribed, and you don't feel well, and you're blue most of the time, and I mean past blue, I mean you're depressed, and anyone who has been clinically depressed knows what I'm talking about. It's not the blues. If your joints hurt for no good reason, if you say, wait, no, I'm only 42. Why do my joints hurt? Why do I feel like an 80-year-old? Listen to your body. And, and, and follow your gut. You should pardon the expression. It doesn't have to be confusing. For most people, 20 grams of carbohydrate or fewer a day, total, that's total, not net, or fewer, and keep in mind that 5 is fewer than 20, and 12 is fewer than 20, and 0 is fewer than 20. For most people, 20 total grams of carbohydrate a day or fewer, eating fatty sources of protein and not eating if you're not hungry, will do the trick. If nothing else, you'll start to feel better. It's difficult to convince ourselves to not pay attention to the weight. But many of us have a lot of healing to do before we can lose weight. Excuse me, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm bothered by something here. So I'm going to try it. No, I'm not. It's going to be too much trouble. Um, Let's face it, what good is it being a size 6 if you're not healthy? What good is it being a size 6 or for you gentlemen out there having a 32 inch waist or 30 inch waist if you're taking insulin for blood sugar or you're taking a lot of um, medications for acid reflux? 
if your joints hurt all the time, if you're depressed, if you have no energy. You know, Wallace Simpson, the Duchess of York, was is quoted as saying, you can never be too rich or too thin. As if money and being thin means all your problems go away. We know better than that. But try to first focus on feeling better. One of the first things I noticed, and this I started in January of 2014 with this, within about two or three weeks maybe, I realized I, I, my, my body didn't hurt. Now, I had not lost a lot of weight. It had only been a couple of weeks. And I was really overweight, okay? Really heavy, perfectly round. But inflammation start. I now know, inflammation started to reduce. I didn't know it at the time. So that was a victory. Getting up off the sofa and not groaning. That was a victory. Realizing that I didn't have the dark cloud approaching, the dark cloak of depression that, that I could see coming three blocks away. That I hadn't had an episode and it had been a while and all of a sudden it's been six months and I haven't had that. That was a victory. The fact that I can think again, as I've said many times, I used to be really smart. And then I got all foggy. And then I got smart again. It's like, as I said, it was as if someone had taken my intellect and smeared over the front of it with Vaseline. And I knew the, I knew the information was there on the other side of the Vaseline. I just couldn't focus on it. Someone pushed all the Vaseline to the side, making sure that it's not one of my children. It's not. So if you're curious about what to do on this, keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day. Eat fatty sources of protein and don't eat if you're not hungry. That really is the bare bones about it. If you're confused, what about MCT oil? How many grams of protein should I have every day? How many grams of fat? How am I going to get in the fat? What if my fitness pal tells me that I have not eaten enough calories? Hmm. Um, what else is another one that comes up? I don't have a thyroid. What am I going to do? What do I do about cravings? These are all questions that come up. I'll give you my opinion. MCT oil is, is not part of the protocol. It's not required. It's not particularly can be counterproductive. It is being pushed for other reasons than trying to help you lose weight. It's not the presence of the fat that gets you into ketosis, it's the absence of the carbs. And if you're drinking medium chain fats, which cannot be stored on the body, which is what an MCT oil is, medium chain triglyceride, if it can't be stored, guess what goes to the front of the line to get burned? Fat. So if you're trying to burn body fat, but you're consuming medium chain triglycerides, which are in MCT oil and to a lesser degree coconut oil, It's, it's like, well, I want to burn my cord of wood at the campfire, but, but I have got to get rid of the lighter fluid first. So you keep burning lighter fluid and you're not going to get to the wood. Uh, what about getting in your calories? Don't do that. Don't let an app tell you how much to eat. Don't let anyone tell you what to eat. Don't let anyone tell you how much to eat. Listen to your body. If you're not hungry, don't eat. Are you going to let, is there an app out there that will tell you how, how much a urinary output you sh must have every day? And then you start measuring it and then you say, oh my goodness, I have not peed enough today. My app says my kidneys are going to explode. No, you pee as much as you need to pee. Eat when you're hungry. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Don't let an app tell you how much to eat. And keep in mind, if you're burning fat for fuel particularly, your body is by definition getting the its energy needs met, combined with what you put in your mouth and what you burn off your chukas. What about no thyroid, high thyroid, hypothyroid, gallbladder? I don't have a gallbladder. It's okay. It's okay. I had a hysterectomy. I did too. Way, way, way back when I was a young woman. I had a hysterectomy. Didn't impede me a bit. Oh, but I'm postmenopausal. Me too. Started when I was postmenopausal. 
Oh, but I've always been fat. Pretty much me too, other than that small window of time in my mid-teens to my mid-twenties. It was pudgy, and then it was not so pudgy, and then after the birth of our second child, I, I just started putting on weight and never went back. I actually weigh over 60 pounds less today than I did when I became pregnant with our third child. Um, what, are, what are the things are common, understandable questions? I don't like bacon. What am I going to do? Don't eat bacon. If you don't like it, don't eat it. How am I going to get into fat? You don't get into fat. Eat the fat that comes along with the way nature provided our protein. Poultry with the skin. Beef with the fat. Pork with the fat. Lamb with the fat. Oily sources of fish. Eggs with the yolks. If you can tolerate dairy, dairy. Full fat dairy, not unlimited, keep in mind. Full fat sour cream, which is of course dairy. Mayo, which is kind of dairy. It's not really dairy. Um, but not in limited quantities. Eat your main source of food. Be fatty sources of protein. If you want a couple of tablespoons of um, mayo mixed in with something or other, have it. Half an avocado a day, a beautiful source of uh, nutrition. Um, and hey, Stacy. Stacy writes, I have two pounds of bacon in my oven as we speak. Robin Mitchell writes, I keep, I keep it as simple as possible. Sometimes I'm not hungry for a couple of days in a row. Absolutely. I ate like a condemned person yesterday. It was all keto. I'm not worried about it. Today, I was making pancakes because, for the most part, if it's Saturdays, my lovely mate gets pancakes and two sausage patties along with his creamy coffee. He says, but babe, you're not going to eat pancakes? You, no, he says, you don't like pancakes? He says, hey, yeah, I do. I'm just not hungry. I don't know when I'll be hungry again today, but when I am, I'll eat. If I'm not, I won't. So, to recap, you do what works for you. Please restrain yourself from dogmatically telling other people, particularly on online forums, what is right and what is wrong and what they should do and what they shouldn't do. Um, for those of you who know, I am the sole moderator and admin of the Keto After 40 with Casey Facebook group. And I'm just uh, adopting a slash and burn policy to dogmatism. You tell somebody you're wrong, you're probably going to get your message deleted because you don't know that they're wrong. And that's not helpful. Don't tell someone they must do something. Don't tell someone they mustn't do something. Nobody gets a vote on what we eat, and you don't get a vote on what other people eat. And what works for one may not work for others. I do try to keep the Keto After 40 with KC Facebook group very simple because a lot of people are coming and trying to learn, and I try to keep the confusion and the conflicting messages to a minimum. Uh, Katie Haas SD writes, I tried it once and overcomplicated things and obsessed over data and failed. The second time around, I'm keeping it simple and focusing on my carbs only, and I'm down just shy of 20 pounds since the beginning of the year. Simple works. And you know what? It's not because it's magical. It's because it always worked. Most of the things in our lives, if we don't overthink them, if we get out of the way of the way we're designed to live, we'll be okay. Mostly. We've been around a really long time. 70 million years. Keep in mind that agriculture, grains, have only really been around about 10,000 years. So we were designed to eat fatty sources of protein. And don't eat if you're not hungry. Smorgasbords would have been a very rare thing. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Okay, cravings. Question comes up. How am I going to get through the cravings, y'all? What do I do to get through the cravings? Common question. You know what? 
you know the answer. There's only like two answers. Give in to them or don't. Now, you can employ some tricks. I set a timer. I don't really get cravings anymore. I mean, I'm well past that. But I set a timer. Okay, for five minutes, I'm not going to eat the whatever I'm craving. We'll see what happens in, you know, after five minutes. But think to yourself, just because you have a craving doesn't mean you need to give in to it. How well would it go over in your life if your significant other said, oh my God, I had a craving for that other person. So I just, what was I to do? I had a craving. You get a grip and you don't give in to the craving for the other person. What if your child said, I had a craving to skip school? We call it different things other than cravings, but they're all the same thing. We want when we want when we want it. Give in to it if you wish. You're an adult. Don't be surprised if you have more cravings. But just don't give in. Sounds simple. Doesn't mean it's easy. But you're a, you're a grown-up. You've been through harder things than, than giving up a donut. I am going to share with you a message that I received from one of my, uh, after one of my YouTube videos. It's a fairly old one. But someone commented that this person has been really kind of struggling a little bit, trying to just cut back on carbs and, and is feeling better. But was at work and, and in the office kitchen, there were donuts. And she said, I'll just grab a couple and take them home for later because I love donuts. And I guess on a break from work or something, she saw this particular video of mine. And she shared with me that she something rung a bell, struck a nerve. She grabbed the baggie of donuts, took them back into the kitchen so someone else could have them. And I love the way she put this. She said it was one moment and one choice. I love that. So I responded to her. I said, one moment, one choice one mouthful. That is the way we change our lives. And honestly, if we are being true to ourselves and with ourselves, cravings are not irresistible. We tell ourselves that I have cravings, so I can't do this, and so it's very hard. Of course we tell ourselves that. It's, it gives us leave to do what we know we shouldn't be doing. It gives us leave to continue cursing the darkness rather than lighting a candle. And Alana Claire knows food is not the boss of me. My t-shirts are those sold out in a minute. Food is not the boss of me. It's one of the great liberations of this way of eating. By the way, quick commercial, 30 seconds, I promise, not more. There is some swag left. There are some Gokita with Casey, really cool, sporty, athletic t-shirts. Gokita with Casey blank journals with attached pens. And uh, this bag is a carb-free zone, large, insulated, zippered grocery totes. You can get to Gokita with Casey, no, CaseyDurango.com, the swag button. Um, Tanya Roy writes, if you don't do MCT oil, can't see it, I'm sorry. In your coffee, what do you put in your coffee? Okay, Tanya, what do you mean? Honestly, honestly, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold your feet to the fire on that question. If you don't put MCT oil in your coffee, what do you put in your coffee? Are you asking me what I put in my coffee? Sometimes I don't put anything in it. It's coffee, but usually I put a couple of teaspoons measured of heavy whipping cream and some Splenda. No, I don't put butter in my coffee. Why would I do that? That is really calorically dense, and it's a lot of fat grams that I don't want burning in my coffee. I want burning off of my backside. I'd still like to lose about five pounds. Yeah. I mean, oh, thank you, Stacy. She writes, the shirt is buttery smooth, pardon the expression. That's the t-shirt. Um, Beth Jones writes, from a 2X to a large, working on the medium... Yay. I suggest when you order clothes, whether it's a t-shirt for me or anywhere else, unless it's super expensive and you don't want to, you know, have them, buy an aspirational size. Buy a size smaller than you think. 
it's fantastic when you finally fit in those. Um, hey, Marianne Labreche writes, I had to totally cut back on plain pork rinds, my favorite crunch that replaced chips and crackers. Have no carbs, but if you eat the whole bag, absolutely, Marianne, yes. Just because something is allowed does not mean one thing that it's obligatory, and it doesn't mean that it's unlimited. FYI, talk about confusion. I would avoid taking in a message where someone tells you that anything, any food is unlimited, even if it's keto allowed. There are no unlimited keto-friendly vegetables. Because I'll tell you right now, I will do myself some damage eating my favorite, which happens to be broccoli. It's not unlimited. About a cup of non-starchy vegetables, if you wish to have them, and about two cups of leafy greens, maximum, not minimum. Please, seven cups of leafy greens, no. Where did that minimum come from? Okay, so if I have to have seven minimum, does that mean I can have 22 cups? Because it just says minimum, no. Do what you wanna do. Listen to whoever rings true with you. But if things aren't working, take a step back and review. Um, Pam Brook writes, sounds like good level-headed advice. It's just what worked for me, I will tell you that. I took, I took the simplicity on its face. I did do research, the science behind it, when I read The Art and Science of Low-Carbohydrate Living by Drs. Stephen Finney and Jeff Bolick. It, it was approachable enough for me, science but it was approachable enough for me that the explanation of why it works said, well, that makes sense. So that made sense. So I just continued doing what I was doing. I didn't change what I was doing. They do not preach percentages or anything else. They just keep your carb limited, and here's why it works. Now, just because something simple does not mean it's easy. Just because we struggle with something does not mean we're we're failing. I'm going to give another 30-second plug for Patreon. The patrons, some of whom are in this group, we have a fantastic community that has grown. This is where you pledge a minimum amount and you get weekday videos from me, 10-minute videos, sans makeup, pillow hair, and sometimes before my coffee. But different levels you get live streams. I'm going to increase those. I'm doing, I do one a week and I'm going to increase that to more because there, there's a demand for it. Another level, video group chats. We've gotten to know each other and we don't talk about the food very often. It's almost never about the food. It's about everything else in life. Can I tell you in our community, in our Patreon community, in the last month, we have had members who have had a kidney removed due to cancer. Happy news of a pregnancy and then sad news of losing that baby. News of 90 plus year old parent with, with troublesome diagnosis. Mothers-in-law who don't quite get us. We share these stories. And that's what can make, this, this can be when you know that you have embraced a difference. When people get through kidney cancer and miscarriages and seeing their, their father, when you're their only caregiver, deteriorate and be scared and you don't turn to food. Remember that if hunger is not the problem, food is not going to fix anything. Stress eating? Okay. Do we accept it when someone says, I'm just doing stress drinking? No. That's not a healthy way to approach things. I had a stress affair 
I was so stressed out and went and had an affair. No. This community is amazing. There are many communities that you can find. If you are in the middle of a rural community and there's no one around you, start your own online support group or join one. Ask some people out to coffee and you can talk about it and just say, let's talk about this. I need help or I can help you. You can do this. <laughs> community is the thing. So, and I want to thank the patrons because the patrons make it, uh, make it possible for me to do whatever I do. For better or for worse, they make it possible. So, shout out to the patrons. And if you are interested in becoming a patron and getting daily videos from me and or, you know, food recipes all the way up to monthly one-on-one -on -one sessions with me and everything in between, go to patreon.com. Slash go keto with Daisy. Um, Alana Claire writes, My husband could understand why I started keto because the mindset is backwards. But I think he's coming around after seeing my loss and changes. A lot of spouses do that, Alana. Mine was. And it's kind of funny. It's almost always about six months. We call them trailing spouses. It takes about six months to say, Wow, this is actually where my, 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 my partner is. Feeling better, looking better, sounding better, looking good? I think I'm going to try that. Okay, Kathy Clark. If I keep it simple, I'm down 48 and a half pounds. I'm now off metformin and one blood pressure pill. Congratulations. Um, that, is the, that is the hidden thing here. Everyone wants to talk about, you know, I'm on a stall. I haven't lost... I've only lost a pound in three weeks, so I will not be crying for you, by the way. Um, you know, people will, people will sometimes write, I feel better, I'm looking better, my skin is cleared up, I sleep better in the night, but I've only lost X. Let's back up and listen to yourself. Let's get our priorities right. Yes, he will lose faster, Alana. We know that about our dudes. Hey, Patricia Mashburn writes, LOL, my husband trailed by six months. It's uncanny. Okay, folks, um, does anyone have any questions specifically that they'd like to ask or um, struggles or commentary or... Sylvia Pearson writes, love Patreon, although I seldom make live events. Yeah, I'm going to add some more lives. So I do live streams for patrons at a certain level Friday mornings, 11 a.m. Eastern, and I'm going to add random ones throughout the month. I also shake up the video group chats. I do four of those. I might add a fifth, but I try to make them at different days and times because, to be honest, we've got patrons from everywhere from Germany to Portugal to New Zealand to Australia to Hawaii to Alaska and all over the place. Leg cramps. Okay. Um, leg cramps are often a sign of uh, being a little bit low in magnesium. The easiest, quickest fix can be to increase your sodium level. Try to take in, if you are not sodium sensitive, hypertension, try to take in about 5 grams of sodium per day. This is per Dr. Stephen Finney. That's roughly twice as much as the recommended amount. You can do this through Soleil water, just sprinkle more salt on your food. But a really easy way to do this is to take in bouillon, commercially prepared bouillon that happens to be high in sodium. Dr. Stephen Finney travels with little baggies of bouillon cubes. But why sodium if we're talking about magnesium? Sodium, magnesium, potassium, calcium, all the ums are electrolytes, means they, they have electro, electrical charges. Sodium is the queen. Of them. With the diet, our kidneys tend to process and flush water at a regular basis. With the water, can go sodium. With sodium, because they're electrically charged, can go the other minerals, magnesium and potassium. It's not as common to be deficient in potassium, is my understanding, but magnesium is not uncommon. 
So if you will take some sodium, that will help regulate the magnesium. Soaking in an Epsom salt bath will do that. The skin is an excellent delivery mechanism for absorbing the magnesium from the Epsom salts. And beyond that, take I, uh, you can take three slow mag or mag 64 magnesium pills. All, not all magnesiums are the same. You want a slow release and it's someone else can look it up. It's a magnesium. I always get the confused. Citrate or citrate or something. We get ours from Amazon. Mag 64. Take three a day to help regulate it. It's pretty simple. Britta Albright, I'm starting over today and just joined you on, on, P, on Patreon. Well, thank you, Britta. Himalayan sea salt is great. Keep in mind that just look at your sodium source. They all have different levels of sodium. So Himalayan pink salt might have one. Gray salt has another. We use diamond brand kosher salt. Okay. Any other questions? Don't want to overstay my welcome. And I really appreciate you allowing me in your Saturday mornings. Um, and I'm going to repeat myself. This does not have to be confusing. There are people that will have a vested interest in the market being confused so that they can sell, then sell you a product to make it less confusing or a pill to say, you know, you have to eat a minimum number of this and such, and we know that's really hard to eat all that, so here's a pill instead. Um, and, and confuse yourself as much as you like. If you really love getting into the weeds and hyper-managing, micromanaging your protein intake, have at it. I don't measure, never have done, how much protein I eat. It's very self-regulating for me. You can only eat so many boiled eggs if that's what you're eating because you just go, well, that's enough. Same thing with a nice rich cut of steak if you have the fat coming along with it. I have no idea. The grams. I don't care. You do what you want to do. FYI, gluconeogenesis is not the body turning protein into sugar. Protein doesn't turn into sugar. Gluconeogenesis is the process by which our body will, from the raw materials that are in there already, create the bit of glucose it might need. I'm sorry, I'm kind of harpy on this because it was a long kind of stream today I read. Um, I don't measure either, writes Monica. Keep it simple. Don't add extra fat. You don't have to get in fat. It's not the presence of the fat. It's the absence of the carbs. There's no minimum number of grams of fat. Certainly not 200 grams of fat. That would be 1,800 calories just in fat a day. Wow. I would be so overweight. Um, Yvonne writes, Casey, would you please repeat the book you read? Down 40 pounds. My A1C went from 7.8 to 8 to 5.5. I don't measure either. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your comments. The book is The Art and Science of Low Carbohydrate Living by Drs. Stephen Finney and Jeff Bolick. Actually, if you go to my blog, it's under the resources. It's my go-to book. They have a companion book, The Art and Science of Low-Carbohydrate Performance, that explains why athletes can do quite well on this. They don't have to carb load. The opposite. Um, so if you want to go to my blog and find it there. And tacky affiliate link. So if you go to Amazon, that's an affiliate link. doesn't cost you any extra, but I get a few bucks. Again, so I can keep doing this. All right. Thank you, guys. Um, drink to thirst. Yeah, you, part of the protocol is not, unless you have kidney issues, is not to drink minimum amounts of water. If you're not hungry, don't eat. If you're not thirsty, don't drink. If you don't have to go to the bathroom, don't. I, I'm not a fan of arbitrarily not eating if I'm hungry. I'm not a fan of arbitrarily eating just because it's breakfast time or because a nap tells me to. Any more that I would force myself to take a nap in the middle of the afternoon if I wasn't tired or prevent myself from sleeping because I've decided I'm only going to sleep during a certain sleeping window. I'm tired of sleep. If I have to pee, I pee. 
How irreverent. Okay, you guys. Thank you to patrons. If you... Um, hey, Wanda. Okay, Robin Carter. Does belly fat go away fast? There is no way... There's no way to target this. My experience was that... Um, I lost in places that even when I had lost weight before, I didn't lose. So, no, I think, you know, there's no way to target fat on a certain things. It's going to find the fat where it can find the fat. I used to have a giant badunka dunk, lots of junk in my trunk. Now I have no ass at all. It's going to find the fat where it's going to find the fat. Um, Alana Claire, I'm going to, I don't know, I, you write sometimes a combination of keto and fasting will lose the bellow, uh, belly. I don't think there's any scientific evidence for that. So I would I would not be able to back you up on that. Um, you know, people just say things. And there's, you know, where's the randomized control study? People just make stuff up. Not you, Monica. I mean, I'm sure you're repeating something. And it might be that if you did that, your belly fat went away, but... You'd have to have a controlled study to know if that's why, or would have just gone that way anyway. Okay, that's okay. No worries. No acetone. Yeah, it's a condition. Okay. No, and no, no apologies. Open, respectful conversation. That's what we do. Thank you very much, guys. It is raining here, but I'll take it because I know, I know in some parts of the country it is snowing. Or has snow yet again. So I hope you're safe and warm. Be kind to yourself. Don't talk to yourself the way that you would never consider speaking to a friend or a child or a lover or a co-worker. Be kind to yourself. Keep your carbohydrate intake to 20 grams or fewer. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Eat fatty sources of protein. And unless you really like doing it, try not to overthink this. Check out Patreon.com. Thank you for those who are patrons. We support each other a lot there. And, and I mean that in the sincerest sense. People, a lot of patrons are not patrons to get access to me. It's to get access to each other. All right. Everyone is different. Yes, ma'am, Stacy. Keep it in the road. That's what I intend to do. Ciao, Bella. Auf Wiedersehen. Adieu. Adios.